Hi, Susan Elias here. First, I want to let you know that I'm getting organized and I finally have a new website. This new website is primarily for my YouTube channel. On this website, you will see some of my latest videos you can actually click on right there and watch them. There's a page where you can see some of my past work as far as a designer and my clothing. There's also a page where it has my biography, the about page, and it has a small biography as well as my mission statement on why I've been doing it for all these years. And then there's an area where you can give me your email to sign up for my newsletter. Very, very important. This way I can keep you notified about new videos, items, and possible classes in the future. Lastly, on the about page below my biography is a donate button. The donate button is there in case you would like to donate or support my channel in any way. I thank you so much and let's get started. Okay, today I'm going to talk about the sloper. I've got another request through my, the comments on my videos and it's by Lucy Liu. And she's asking me to do a tutorial on how to make the slopers. Well, if you saw my earlier video, you're going to see that I padded this, this dress form to fit me. I don't have a sloper for it, but let me show you and explain what a sloper is first so we can understand where we're going. What these slopers are, are they are patterns that form the dress form without seam allowance. They are just the inside on, and the actual true measurements with a tiny bit of ease on the body of whatever dress form you're working on. This is a standard size eight. I have now patted this mannequin that's gonna be more of like a size 10. And I wanna do a sloper so that I have one to show you that fits me since this mannequin fits me. And now I have blocked and prepared this muslin to drape the front bodice. I have a two part series I'm gonna give you the link for so that you can see how I did that. Um, and I have one inch turned back at the center front. I have my crosswise grain here marked out and I have my apex indication. And we're gonna get started. The first thing you're gonna need to do is put the pin at the apex and make sure that it's on your apex. And I got that's important so that it stays in that position for throughout the entire process. The other part you have to do is a pin here at the neckline another pin at the intersection of the waist center front as well. And then there's gonna be a little bit of excess here. That's normal. The larger the bust, the more there's gonna be excess there. After you have those indications right there, you wanna put a couple more pins to hold it secure at the center front here. Let's put another one here. Let's get, let's get a smaller one here. Here, just like that. And I'm going to be doing a um, two dart sloper because it's such a big bust line and it would make a huge dart down here and I really don't want that. I want to be able to maneuver a dart from up here and a dart from up here. The first thing you're going to need to do to do that is that you're going to have to keep this crosswise grain parallel to the floor. So I'm going to put a pin to hold that in place on the side seams just like that. Now I know how much fullness I'm going to have on the bottom and the top and then I know that this crosswise grain is in the exact spot it needs to be. The first thing we're going to need to do is kind of clean around the, at the neckline. And how I'm going to do that is my process that I do with my two fingers. I go down, across, and sharply to the intersection here where the neck plate is. I'm going to put a pin. It's going to pull. It's not going to be happy. So now we have to use our scissors and cut and slash so that it releases the tension. I'm going to go across. Then I'm going to cut down. I'm going to go across and up. Then I'm going to cut down. And you keep doing this process till it's smooth. I'll take the pin out, do the same process again, sharply at the intersection, put a pin there to hold it in place. If it needs to have a few more slashes, do that. Just don't go all the way through into the seam line itself. So now that's nice and smooth, and this is smooth here. What we're gonna do at this point is smooth it along the shoulder. 
what you need to do is feel where the shoulder line is. I'm going to mark first at the neckline. So I'm going to mark the whole neckline dotted here at the neckline seam. And at the intersection of the neckline and the shoulder, I'm going to put an intersection. I'm going to put a cross mark there. And then here at the shoulder, I'm going to dot exactly where that shoulder line is. And when you get to the intersection of where the princess line is, you want to put a cross mark. That's where the dart's going to start. So I'm going to pull the, the fullness, play with it till I get the fullness right where that marking is. I'm going to put a pin through both layers like that, and that's where the shoulder dart is going to be. Now I'm going to go down here to the arm plate. This is the arm plate. It's very important to have these markings. I'm first going to put a marking underneath the arm plate and the side seam intersection. I'm going to mark all the way around the arm plate to what's considered where the actual screw, which is halfway up. At that point, I'm just going to keep this down with some pins like that just to make sure that my shoulder dart is in the right spot. At that point, I'm going to take my pencil and from that cross mark on this side, I'm going to poke all the way through to the cross mark on the other side and that will give me the indication of where the other side of that dart is. And then I'm going to check underneath. You can fold it back if you want if you can't see where that shoulder line is and at the intersection of the shoulder seam and the arm plate is also a very important marking. At that point you just want to put some light dots on the rim of where that arm plate is and it stops where the screw plate is right there. So now I have that all secure. Let's get to the bottom dart. Okay. Okay. On the bottom dart it also has to be in where the princess seam indication is. So I'm going to make sure I have enough pins here to hold this so it doesn't move out of place. And I'm going to start marking at the waistline. I'm going to put an intersection at the waistline and the center front intersection. I'm going to dot all the way across till I get to the princess seam. I put pins along where my princess seam is so I can feel it all the way underneath. At that point, I'm going to grab the rest of this fullness and like that with my fingers and hold it in place like that. I'm going to put a pin on this side just to hold it in place and I want to make sure that my side seam is nice and smooth. You want to pull it as much as you can. We're going to add the ease later. So I'm going to put this here like that. I'm going to pull it a little bit taut like that and here as well. Okay, so now you have a little bit of pulling going here at the waistline. The same thing has to happen that you did at the neckline on the waist. What I'm going to do is release some of that tension. See if you can see that. I'm going to go across and then I'm going to slash up. I'm going to cross the dart. You don't want to slash anywhere near the dart and then you can slash again outside of the dart. You don't want to go past your waistline. I'm going to go again across and then slash up like that. Okay, I want to give myself my little bit of ease. So I'm going to just squeeze that out here. It's called a pinch of ease. I'm just going to do that with my pin in place. Now I'm going to pull it more taut. It's here at the side seam. I'm going to give me the intersection of the side seam and the waist line. Then I'm going to dot all the way down along the waist um, line like that. And this has already been done on this side. I'm going to take my sharp pencil. And I'm going to poke. I'm going to take the uh, pin out first. It's easier. I'm going to poke from one side to the other side like that. Hopefully you can see that. And then on this side, you'll be able to see the other part of where that dart is. I'm going to pin it back in place like that. Now we need to do the side seams. 
If you have too much muslin, if it's in the way, you can take it out here. I'm going to do the intersection again here underneath the arm plate and where the side seam is. The side seam starts like there. There's that marking. I'm going to feel where the and dot along that side seam. If you have to peek, that is fine. I have a groove here to help me find the side seam better. I'm making all the intersections in green. This intersection is very important. This intersection is important on this side of the dart as well. The apex is also very important. Um, the shoulder tip is important and the neckline and shoulder seam is important. You've got this where that ends as well and this ends. That's all the markings you need on the mannequin. Okay, here I am on the back of the mannequin to, to drape the back part of this sloper and I have the muslin blocked and prepared. I have the center back line turned under and this one inch I have my cross grain which is the mid shoulder le level and I have the intersection of the neck line and the center back and I have the intersection of the waistline and the center back already prepared. I'm going to try to get away with not having a shoulder dart here as well. I'm going to just make one dart here at the waistline um, just to make it simpler for my block. And the first thing we're going to do is the same thing we did in the front. We're going to use the two fingers and go down across sharply at the intersection like this. Place a pin there like that. It's going to pull. We're going to go ahead and slash down to release the tension and up and slash down. And then I'm going to take some of this excess out, as you can see here, like that. I'm going to take the pin out, do the process again, make sure I have it nice and smooth. Putting a pin here at the intersection. And I'm going to slash a little bit further down. Again, just, just don't go all the way to the seam line and you'll be fine. Taking some of that out as well, like that. Now I want to see where the shoulder line is and the best way to do that is to actually turn it back like I'm doing like this and kind of creasing it on the seam like that and then turning it back. So now you know and you can feel where that shoulder line is. I'm going to start dotting at the neckline seam, the intersection of the neckline and the shoulder seam. I'm going to dot all the way across the shoulder seam like that and I'm going to make my little cross mark here at the tip of the shoulder. So hopefully you can see that and the, the shoulder and the arm plate. I'm going to put a pin there like that just to hold it in place. I still have this line pretty much parallel to the ground so it's not really affecting it that I took out that little dart. Now on the bottom what I'm going to do, I'm going to work with the waistline. Move my mannequin up a little bit. Hopefully it will stay. Again, that, that actual dart needs to be where the princess line is. So I'm going to kind of dot all the way along my, my waistline till I get to the intersection of where that princess line is. I'm going to make the intersection like that. Then I'm going to kind of grab what I think it wants to give me as far as the fullness and put a pin there like that. I'm going to pull this a little bit taut here at the waistline. Okay, I'm going to put a pin there just to make sure that we're okay on the side seams like that. Everything seems to be nice and smooth. Okay, I'm going to put another pin right here at the underneath the arm plate as well so you can see that. I want to make sure this is nice and taut. It's tight. I don't want to give any excess. Usually this dart should not be much more than or two and a half inches max. It's, it's only going to be two inches so, it, so I'm in good I'm doing good. And the reason why is because my waist is a little bit fuller. If it's a very, very narrow waist, it's going to want to have a larger dart. So after I did those intersections, I'm going to do it again in pencil until I get him right. Um, I'm going to take the pin out at this intersection. I'm going to use and poke the sharp part of my pencil through from one side to the other. 
So now I know this is where the other side of that dart needs to be. I mark it. I'm putting it back together like that. I'm going to release this pin here. I'm going to put my pinch of ease like that at the waistline, just like I did in the front. I'm going to put the pin back there as well. I want to release some of this tension here, so I'm going to cut approximately two inches or so below the waistline, slash up to release some of that tension, go across again. And if you have to slash again, as long as you don't go past that waist tape, you're good. So now it's nice and smooth here at the waistline as well. And it's going to be a you know, fairly good sized dart, so we're okay here. Underneath the arm plate, what's important is the markings underneath the arm plate again. You kind of use this your fingers like that. I'm going to put a pencil line mark that way and the cross mark where the side seam of that is. I'm going to lightly dot the side seams here as well. And I can kind of feel it, so that's where I'm putting my dots. And there's also like a little groove here that I made. Okay, so now we have primarily the we want to we want to dot it here on the edge of the arm plate, and then underneath, like we did in the front, we're going to make a groove, either with our fingernail or with the tip of the pencil like that. Now you have basically what you need as far as your markings go. Let's do that all in green again. I'm going to lower this. Let's just do the bottom first so I can lower it later. I'm going to put the intersection cross mark here where that uh, the waistline and the center back is. I'm going to put the intersection mark on both sides of that dart. I'm going to put the intersection at the side seam and the waistline. I'm going to put the intersection at underneath the arm plate and the side seam. The intersection here at the shoulder and the um, arm plate, the intersection at the neckline and the shoulder, and we already have this indication, we already have that indication, and we're ready to bring this on the flat. Here I am back on the, um, with the back um, part of the muslin. I forgot one more thing. You need a pinch of ease right here at the shoulder blade level so you have movement with your back sloper. I have the three markings now, the new marking here at the intersection of the shoulder level and the armhole, and then I have one here at the top tip as well as underneath. Those are the three markings you need to make a perfect armhole. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to make the next video transferring to both the front and the back muslin onto a hard cardboard and making the block and finishing my block. So stay tuned for that video that's coming next. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, Susan Elias Couture. Like it if you like this video. Comment because you know I'm going to answer it. Thank you. Bye-bye.